Okay, I made a working analog clock in the Fusion page of DaVinci Resolve. I don't know why, but I'm gonna show it to you, show you how I made it, and give it away as a free download. Let's go. I've got a blank composition, and in my generators I have SSC clock. I can drag that to the timeline, and you'll see it looks like a clock. And over five seconds, the second hand ticks five times. Cool, but if we extend it, it just keeps going. What's this? I've stretched this out to be about an hour, and it starts. And if I scan through, you'll see, hey, each time the second hand goes around, the minute hand moves more, and it keeps going and keeps going and keeps going. And if we watch that minute hand, over the course of an hour, it goes all the way around and lands back at one hour. And then the hour hand is out to where we would have a little one if I had added numbers. And this was in a 60 frames per second timeline, but if I jump over to a 24 frames per second timeline, it works just the same. And it just does its thing, taken away. Cool, let's make it. I'm gonna delete this, hop over to my 60 frames per second timeline. I'm gonna come down to effects, grab a fusion composition, drag that right at the beginning. And to start, I will extend this a fair amount. Anything over a minute should work for where I'm gonna put like the math behind this thing. I'm gonna open the fusion page and start building. I'm gonna create a background node, make this white, toss an ellipse on there, boom. And uncheck solid, pull up border width, boom. That is our outline for our nice little clock. Let's copy that background and we're gonna add a polygon mask to that. Uh, first I will connect this so we know what's going on. Background polygon, I'm gonna click here off to actually this one will be going up. And then we are going to select both of those points. Click Shift P to publish those. Those will show up in our inspector over here. Um, right away, I will uncheck this right click for shape animation. I'll go to remove the polyline so we don't have any uh, funky keyframing going on. And then I'm gonna navigate this point zero to uh, point 0.5 and point 0.5, the exact center of our composition. And point 0.1. The X just has to be a 0.5, and then we can stretch this to whatever feels comfortable. We will uncheck solid as that, increase border width just a hair. And if we click off, we've got a little arrow there. Now, here's where we start getting some cool magic. Coming out of the background, I'll make a transform node. And because we have one end of this point at the exact center of our composition, and the transform uh, pivot uh, defaults to the exact center of our composition. If we just change this rotate and pull it down negative, it just starts rotating like a clock. Now I am gonna show off the exact method I use to build this. Um, there are 12 ways to do everything in Resolve and especially the Fusion page. You could do something like make an expression on this angle and to make it work in different frame rates, you could add something like a time speed node after the fact. Uh, we're gonna consolidate this into uh, a tool inside the anim curves modifier because that's just what I chose. So this transform, I'm going to right click on angle, go to a modify with anim curves, check that, change the source from transition to custom. I'm gonna set a keyframe at zero and a keyframe at 60 frames. We're in a 60 frames per second timeline. So this will be at exactly one second. Now, when you make an anim curves modifier on an angle, it defaults the scale to 360. We're gonna change this to negative one. Uh, negative because we want the angle to go negative and it's easier putting the negative here than a negative uh, input, at least the way I think. So at frame zero, we're at zero and at frame 60, we are gonna change this input to six. This is the first little bit of math in this. The number we are putting into the input needs to be the number of degrees it has moved. Because we changed that scale from uh, defaulting to 360, so counting up, the scale is one. I know it's confusing. It took me an embarrassing amount of time to figure this out. But with this setup, the important thing is that this input is the number of degrees it has moved over that period of time. In this case, one second. And we're on the second hand, which we know moves 360 degrees in one minute, 60 seconds per minute. So 360 divided by 60 equals six. Now, what's gonna happen? We've only set two keyframes, so if we go back to zero, over a second, it'll move and then it will stop. Oh no. But if we select that transform, open up our spline viewer, check input, 
click this little button to zoom to fit, we see that move represented here. And what we can do is select those and then click this set relative button and then that will just continue off forever. So this hand will just rotate at that constant speed forever and ever. But we want to clock the ticks. So I'm gonna come back, select these two keyframes and click this button here, the step in. So it'll hold that point and then when it gets to the next keyframe, it'll just tick over and the set relative works for this. So just each second, the clock just ticks that second hand over. Very cool. And now we can just copy this entire setup, paste that, hold shift and that merge to over this line and it'll just automatically replace that in. You could always do some fancy naming like naming this background seconds, naming this next one minutes, and hey, let's get hours set up. Cool. So for the minute hand, we already have this six degrees per second, but we wanna know how many degrees the minute hand moves in one second, not the second hand. But since we already have this number of six degrees uh, per minute for the second hand, we know the minute hand rotates once per hour. So for the minute hand to go completely around, we need to take this number and divide it again by 60. And hey, let's just jump to hours. Again, we are dividing this by 60 to get to that minute hand. And then we are dividing again by 12, because 12 hours for the hour hand to go all the way around gets us this very tiny number. And if we just scrub through, you'll see we have three hands going very different speeds. But also on these minute and hour hands, I'm going to uh, uncheck that step in. So that minute and hour hands, instead of ticking, they are just constantly moving at that very slow rate. And to do that, I am just selecting these two nodes and you can't uncheck this step in, but you can click back to linear and that will work great. So now those move at a constant speed as our little ticking hand ticks around. Now a few other things, of course, we can uh, take this hour hand and do things like pull down uh, the length, pull up the border width. We can make that a little darker. Just, just some cool things to separate all of these, also quite a bit darker. And then find a little middle ground for that second hand. Or you can even make these colors. You want the, the minute hand to be blue? Let's do it. And that's our math and it's just working. If I go back to the edit page, I can just drag this out to some arbitrary, very large number. And if I don't look at my time code and I try to cheat, but I come to the end of our composition, I'll say, okay, this clip is a little past three hours and a quarter. Yeah, yeah. You don't know I wasn't cheating, but also that was so imprecise. I wasn't cheating. It works. And you can just let this do its thing and it'll just keep ticking every second. Second, minute, hour hand, and it works. Last thing I wanna show you. The way we've set this up, this will work in any 60 frames per second timeline. If you want it to work natively at other frame rates, this is what you have to do. I am hopping back in. I'm going to go to my seconds modifiers. We're gonna look at time scale. Now, we're gonna leverage math in some cool expressions. This time scale is at one. Now, if we want this to work in a 24 frames per second timeline, for each tick, instead of taking 60 frames, it'll only need to take 24. So that motion needs to happen 2.5 times faster. But because of people smarter than me and who know Resolve better than me, I can right click here, go to expression, and I'm going to paste in a nice little bit of code. Let's check this out. You will be able to download this clock just because, but also I will have uh, this little expression in the description so you can just copy it. But I'm gonna go through it real quick. Remember this 60 for later, but we have comp, get preferences, comp, frame format, cool. This is a little bit of code that tells Fusion, hey, look at what the default frame rate is. Even though Fusion is frame rate dependent, if you're using it on a composition on the edit page, it can read that frame rate inside Fusion. So that all is saying just, hey, get the frame rate. And then because I originally designed this in 60 frames per second, it's just 60 divided by that. So if you use it on a 60 frames per second timeline, it'll be 60 divided by 60, you'll get one. If you use it on a 24 frame rate timeline, it'll be 60 divided by 24, which gets you that 2.5 and anything in between or beyond. So I'm just gonna copy this and paste this in our other timelines as well. So if you want to save this as a preset, you can select all that, right click, macro, create macro. And then it's like, cool clock, file, save as group. 
I got my little presets test guy here, boom. And then in your uh, effects library, I'm gonna come to edit generators. I pulled up this cool clock here. I'm gonna drag that right in. It'll pop in. You could always also go to these three dots and quote show folder and drag the setting file there. And if I go back to the edit page, hop over to that 24 frames per second timeline. I am in my generators, scroll down and we have, hey, cool clock. Drag that right on and we have our clock. That ticks away every second for as long as we extend it to be. Then the other arms start kicking in there as well. And it's a clock based on math, based on the frame rate of your timeline. I think the application for this is fairly limited, but it's cool, so I did it. And I know I touched on some uh, cool things building it that hopefully you can use on something uh, more applicable. Like I said, download link will be in the description uh, if you want to poke around specifically how I made it, even though I showed off how I made it. I don't know. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.